I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Let me share your love and grace in all I do Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. We are very happy that you have joined us for another edition of the Pastor's Corner. This program is one of which I know many look forward to on a weekly basis. And uh, we are happy that you are joining us today for this special edition of the Pastor's Corner. Today, I will be bringing to you the message and I trust and pray that as you listen to the message that God's Spirit will indeed impress upon your heart to make whatever you hear a part of your life. And so before I lead you into the Word of God today, I want you to bow your heads with me wherever you are as we pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity to share your Word. Thank you for those who are listening to me wherever they are. May this message today fill the heart of somebody in Jesus' name. Today my message to you is entitled, Lord, Transform Me. Yes, you've heard me correctly. Lord, Transform Me. The greatest want in the world today is the want of Christians who are transformed. The Apostle Paul recognized that if only Christianity can be what it ought to be, what a difference it can make in the life of men and women in this world. The challenge that we face in this world today is that there are too many Christians who call themselves Christians but are not living like Christians. Christianity is not a business. Christianity is not a career. Christianity is an experience. And that experience can only come through a transformation. I want to take you to the Word of God as I read our passage for meditation today. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And I want to read for you verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters... In view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, the Apostle Paul was writing to a church that was diverse. This church was diverse ethnically. In the church of Rome, there were people who came all over the Roman Empire. There were Jews from the diaspora who Paul was writing to. They came from different races, different kindred. And they, upon becoming Christians, brought many of their pagan practices with them to the extent that there was now a collision of what a Christian ought to be doing 
versus what pagan practices uphold. The Apostle Paul recognized that a Christian has to be resolute. He cannot be double standard and he bases the Christian's foundation for doing what is right upon he surrendered to Christ. He says, therefore, I urge you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now this phrase seems like a paradox because a sacrifice is by nature dead. But the Apostle Paul is saying here, I want you to present your bodies like a living sacrifice. How can someone who is dead still be living? Well, you see, when you give God your life, you die to self. When you surrender your heart to the Lord, you die to all that characterizes human ego. And Christ becomes alive in you. That's why the Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it is not I, but Christ. Note he says here, I am crucified. Meaning, he dies with Christ. But when you die with Christ, he becomes alive in you. And so it is no longer you that is living, but Christ. Hence, when he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, he's saying that when you give God your life, he takes over. So it is no longer you being presented, but actually it is God that is being presented through you. We need more Christians in the world today who are willing to completely surrender their lives to Christ. When you are surrendered, you no longer live to please yourself. When you are surrendered, you no longer live to glorify yourself. When you are surrendered, you live and you do everything to please God because he is in you. He determines your mode of conduct. He determines the speech that you will speak. He determines the places that you will go. But it begins first by giving him your heart. Too many of us want Jesus to be our master, but we want to remain in control. We want Jesus to be in our hearts, but we want to call the shots. Today, God wants not only that you say by word that he is your master, he wants you by practice to give him your heart. Let him take control of your life fully. And when he does, it no longer becomes you. It is no longer what you are doing. But as the Apostle Paul says, it is now Christ in you. And so when you surrender your life to the Lord, the Bible says that this becomes holy and pleasing and this becomes your only true form of worship you see worship is not so much what you say worship is who you are too many people go to church and never worship because you see worship cannot be imposed on you you have to come to church to worship and the way you do that is you come to church with christ in your heart when christ is in your heart you can sing because not, not because the music is being played, you can sing because he puts a song in your heart. When Christ is in your heart, you can smile even when there is no reason for you to smile. When Christ is in your heart, you can look at the positive even when all around you is negative. When Christ is in your heart, you can see tomorrow even though your clouds may be dark in front of your face. What I'm saying to you essentially is, when Christ is in your heart, it makes a difference. When Christ is in your heart, it matters all the more to you. We need more persons in, in this world in whose heart Christ resides. I believe when Christ resides in our heart, we will have less crimes in this country. I believe when Christ is in our heart, we will have better neighbors and, and not just better neighbors, but we will be able to experience Experience what it means to live in perfect peace. But not only that, the Bible says, when Christ is in your heart, I'm reading from Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Now, this world has a pattern. Yes, 
The world has a schema. And the world is trying to get everyone to fit into the mold. The world is driven by materialism. The world is driven by secularism and yes, even postmodernism. The world is trying to dictate how you should live your life. The world is trying to impose its standard upon you. You see folks, if you are not careful, you will find yourself being driven by every whim and fancy of this world. This world is a world where moral decadence is on the increase. This world is a world where morality is on the decline. This world is a world where values are slowly being eroded. This world is a world where pretty soon you will not even be aware what is right and what is wrong. Are you willing to allow the world to pattern your life for you? Too many Christians are patterning their lives after the world. Too many Christians want to dress like the world. Too many Christians want to go to places of the world. Christ is saying, do not pattern yourself after the world. In fact, the word used there in the Greek when it says that do not, do not, uh, uh, that you should not conform to the world. The word used there is a word from which we get the English word schema. Suschematistes. In fact, the English word schema comes from that word. In fact, that word schema portrays something that has an external portrayal or an external skeleton, so to speak. What the Bible is saying is that your schema, your external portrait must not look like the world. In other words, the Christian must have a distinct look. Yes, sus kimatiste. The Christian should not try to be like the world. The Christian has a unique appearance. Who should you look like? If you don't have to look like the world, then who should you pattern your life after? Well, I've come by here this afternoon to let you know that the one who created you, yes, your creator, the one who molded you into his image and likeness, he wants you to pattern your life after him. And that's why he says that your schema should not be like the world, but you must be transformed, metamorphosed. That's a word from which we get the English metamorphosis. That word tells us that we should be slowly be growing into the image and likeness that God has ordained for us. Folks, your schema should not be like the world. In other words, your value system cannot be based on the world. It must come from the word of God. The way you speak, the way you live your life cannot be based upon the world. It must be based upon the word of God. God wants to transform us into his image and likeness. There are too many Christians who are looking like the world, talking like the world, dressing like the world, but still they are calling the name of Christ. In fact, Mahatma Gandhi said it right. He said, I have no problem with you Christians. You Christians talk very well. You sing very nice. But if only you are like your Christ, I would have been a Christian today. I believe today that if more Christians would forget patterning themselves after the world and become more fixed on who Jesus is, growing into his image, what a difference we can have in this world. We need more Christians today who are willing to be transformed by the Lord. That's what my title said this afternoon, Lord, transform me. When I am transformed, I will no longer pattern my life after the world. When I am transformed, I will no longer be pleasing the world. When I am transformed, I will live to glorify God. When I am transformed, I'll be a better neighbor to my neighbor next to me. When I am transformed, 
I will be more caring and kind to those around me. When I am transformed, you will see the difference in my interactions. I believe our challenge today is transformation. And God wants to transform us into his image. If only I can allow God into my heart and transform me, as the Bible says, when my mind is renewed, then only I will be able to do the will of God. I know many of you today are wondering what the future holds for you. Some of you are wondering what tomorrow may bring for you. Well, when you are transformed, you don't have to worry anymore. Because you see, the man who is transformed, he knows in whose hand his life is. The man who is transformed, he knows who holds tomorrow. Even though the present may look bleak, even though his present circumstances may look dreary, he knows that with Jesus in the vessel, there is always a silver lining behind every dark cloud. You see, folks, what can give you hope in this world of hopelessness? It is not better politicians. It is not a brighter economy. It is not even more financial security. What can give you hope to face the uncertainties of this life is if Christ transforms your heart. Then and only then, you will be able to look at tomorrow and face it with optimism today. The challenge that God wants to lay upon your heart is, are you willing to be transformed? Are you willing to be a better person? We are coming to the end of 2016, and I know many people like making resolutions for the new year. Why not allow this prayer to be a resolution for 2017? Lord, transform me. If more persons in this world can pray that prayer, what a difference 2017 can be. Lord, transform me. You see, if God transform you, and if God transform me, what a difference we can make in this world today. As I end this broadcast, I want to challenge you. Allow God to make a difference in your life. Do not end this year the same way you started it. And the best way to end it is to allow your life to pattern the life of Christ. Let this mind be in you, Philippians 2, 5 to 8 says, that was in Christ Jesus. Let the pattern of Jesus be your example. And if that is your example, I want to guarantee you, you will not just have a, a prosperous life in this life, but most certainly you will have a prosperous life in the life to come. Today, God wants to transform me. He wants to transform you. Are you willing to be transformed? Are you willing to place your hand in his hand? Are you willing to say with me today, Lord, transform me? If that's your desire, wherever you are this moment, I want to invite you to bow your heads with me as I have a special word of prayer for you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, our greatest want today is the want of transformation. Oh God, I pray today that someone who listened to this broadcast will make a resolution in their heart to be transformed by you so that they can be a better human being. But most importantly, oh God, as you transform our hearts, may we be saved in your eternal kingdom, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for viewing this episode of The Pastor's Corner. And I want to invite you to join us again next week at the same time for The Pastor's Corner. God bless you.